You heard all of it. Nobody can back it up by anything. They can say that it's hard to get the blood through the capillaries. Yeah, that's not obvious. But if the heart is not pumped, what is it? So we, we've got to stop just quoting people and saying, it's not a pump, it's not a pump, but right, what is it? So in this process, I never started out with this idea. I just started out with trying to make a seven-sided form. That was my whole thing with that. And ten years later, I have found these things uh, that are associated with, with the heart. And so I can show you now, not based on uh, kind of a fantasy or on a fancy or on uh, sentimentality about the heart. We need to work away from sentimentality. We need to work more objective. We need to work more on um, what we can actually see. Okay, and we can bring that into our will, and then here comes the feeling. I'm not feeling first. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to start this off in a different way. I'm going to just go right into the demonstration and show you a couple things why what I think the heart is. So the first thing I discovered was a seven-sided form, and I have a whole lecture on just how I did that, you know, which I'm not going to cover, but I will show you the seven-sided form here on this uh, screen. There it is. Um, that's the first time that that geometry has ever been on Earth. A lot of people ask me, well, how come nobody else discovered this form? Why is it that uh, it comes now? I mean, people have been studying platonic forms for 6,000 years, and this has never been found. Well, one of the reasons it's never been found is because I never saw platonic solids as solids. I saw them as hollow. And then I thought that if you put a platonic form in another one, which you do, you can put it in, and they fit. All the faces fit, and the corners fit, and so forth. Well, that was nice, too, but that's not what I did. I took one platonic form and put it in the same platonic form, but twice as small. Then I took that little small tetrahedron and I sucked it up. In other words, I used vacuum and I brought it up to the top of the tetrahedron, which is bigger, twice as big. And halfway between the going up from the very top of the tetrahedron to the top of the big tetrahedron, this form came. Mm -hmm. I also found out that if I relate it to the heart, I, I had to do another process. I had to put the form through a cube process. Another thing has never been done. I put a tetrahedron in a cube, and then I spiraled it. Now, no one's ever done that before. I don't know why. I think it's because of crystals. Crystals don't spiral. Crystals just go up and down when they grow. But you know, when it comes to the plant life, or our life, we have spirals. So this is a spiraling tetrahedron in a cube. That creates a seven-sided form. There's another way of doing it also by taking a five-pointed star and unfolding it. So there's three ways to find this form. That took me years to find out. But anyway, one of the things about this, and I'm going to try to lift this up, it's heavy, but inside here there's a light. Maybe somebody can turn that light on, and it's a lot easier to see if, if maybe Ray and I can pick this thing up. If somebody can turn that light on. Yeah, I do this, thanks Ray, I do this because it's hard to see. But this is the seven sided form, and edges only. Here's another. <coughs> it's the same thing that you see here, but it's only edges. And this is only points. Same form. Okay, so one of the things that I discovered was to put this through a process of uh, the elements. Earth, water, air, and fire. <laughs> this is the way that nature works. If you put fire under a block of ice, it turns into a liquid. If you keep burning, it turns into a gas. Okay, and then it goes into fire. And fire is transformation. And each one of these processes that nature uses is a quality. So earth is basically what's different. Everything is different, 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 different. Facts, 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 facts. <laughs> then the next one is what's changing. And that's water. It's the third. And the only way I could change this form that I saw was it's way too strong to twist it or to push it, anything like that. The only thing I could do with it was spin it. And I spun it and I turned it into a bell. Mm -hmm. And this bell has all kinds of black lines in it. You see those black lines? Mm -hmm. Every one of those mm -hmm. things I studied. Mm -hmm. And I showed this to a bell expert from Russia and he said that in the, in the whole history of bell making, which has been for two, two or three thousand years, 
They've never known the geometry. Well, I didn't start out to do bells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's what came. And you know, of course, this is when a bell is fixed. This is what it looks like. Okay, so this is a formative force come to rest. <coughs> this is a time being. This isn't a flow being. Okay, based on flows. It's based on time. Because it's based on seven. And it's an odd number. So this is one of the reasons, another reason it's never been discovered because it is difficult to work with. But the surfaces of this form, both the quadrilateral, which is square, and the triangle, which is three sided, are equal perfect. It's a perfect form. Absolutely perfect. Just as perfect as a cube. All the spaces of the six phases of the cube are perfect. Same surface area. So is the seven. That's amazing because that's that's one of the follies that I was after, but I didn't have any idea that I would get. Anyway, so I put this uh, into a spin, and of course when I put it in the process of water, what was changing is it, it will change into a bell. I'll have to plug this in. Thank you. Um, all I have to do is just to put it into water, and you'll see the first thing about the heart. The first thing about this form is that it creates a vortex. This start. Is it starting yet? I can't see. The vortex starting? Yes. Okay. So what happens is that there is a circle at the top of the form uh, that the vortex tries to go in between. You see it trying to get through there? And you can see that it is difficult for it to go all the way down, and the reason it is is because the circle at the top is spinning. So some people are saying that the heart is irregulated. That's no proof. This is showing that the circle that's spinning in the top will not allow the vortex to go all the way down, and I'll show you what happens when it tries to go down too far. You see it start to spin off at the top? Look when I go faster, what happens? See that? It spins off the top. So that means that this circle here that's created when I spin it, see the circle? Mm -hmm. That doesn't allow the vortex to go down any deeper than about here. Now one of the things I don't understand about the heart is why is the tip of the heart, which I'll get this going again, why is the tip of the heart, which is called apex, paper thin? Mm -hmm. 